We've all felt stressed out at some point in our lives, right? I mean, a lot of us feel stressed out right now. While the situations that cause us stress may not be as extreme as those of our cave-dwelling ancestors, the effects that stress has on our mind and our bodies is identical. Hi, I'm Rich Burnett for Wondrium, and in this episode of Perspectives, we're gonna hear from a handful of experts about the various symptoms of stress, as well as ways to cope. We start now by learning about a common physiological response to stressful situations called the fight or flight response. Enjoy. Imagine that you are walking in a forest with friends on a Sunday afternoon. As you are talking to them, not really paying attention to where you are walking, you suddenly notice movement just in front of your right foot. You quickly glance down and see a large striped snake, coiled and seemingly ready to strike. What's your immediate physiological reaction? Like most people who are afraid of snakes, your heart will start to pound, your muscles will become tense, and you will start to sweat. Some people may experience mild forms of these reactions just from hearing this description of the snake. This type of fight or flight reaction in response to threat was first described by Walter Cannon, a physiologist at Harvard Medical School in the early 1900s. When we first notice any kind of threat, such as the snake, our sympathetic nervous system and our endocrine system are stimulated, leading to increases in two hormones, adrenaline, or the more technical name of epinephrine, and norepinephrine, also called noradrenaline. Cannon demonstrated that increases in these hormones in the bloodstream activate the cardiovascular system so that blood is directed to the brain and muscles. This is what prepares someone to either fight off a threat or run away. More recent findings have led to important updates to our model of stress. For example, Cannon's original fight or flight model was updated to include the possibility of a freeze response in the face of threat, becoming immobile. Generally, all three responses, fight, flight, or freeze, have one thing in common and that is to get out of the present moment as soon as is physically and psychologically possible. But this exercise challenges you to just stay in this probably very unpleasant, uncomfortable, threatening situation and take some time to just check it out for a minute or two. Just stop, just be there, and see what happens. For instance, if you normally fight when you're under stress, try to seek connection. When a stressful situation occurs and you feel your hackles go up, before you pounce an attack, stop. Take a breath. Turn to someone you trust and say, I need help, or I don't understand. Pause. Consider your vulnerability. Consider your weakness. Don't fight. Don't let your reaction be defensiveness. Come from a place of openness, and then sit in that space of being open, of being vulnerable, of asking for help, and just see what happens. If you normally choose flight, if you tend to leave the room or psychologically leave the situation by doing something else, then just stop. Do nothing. Don't move, don't pick up your phone, don't turn to your computer, don't pick up a book. Don't even fidget. Just sit in that space. Take a few deep breaths. Force yourself to be still, calm, and quiet and see if you can figure out from deep inside what is really going on. Why are you experiencing stress? What is the core of the situation? And if you normally freeze, then don't allow yourself to stop. Give yourself three seconds to answer the question, what is one thing I can do right now? And then immediately do it. Don't allow yourself to become paralyzed. Remember that movement leads to more movement. Even if your first action doesn't solve the problem, it gets you moving, and that puts you on a trajectory toward addressing the stressful situation. Turn to the situation, make eye contact, nod. It can be something small, but choose to engage and note the details of the situation. The point of the exercise is to help you remember that whatever the event, the event itself is not causing your stress. What is causing your stress is your perception of the event. Because of habit and tendency, you have a consistent way of behaving when you perceive stress. By changing how you behave, you can change how you think and feel. 
and with a calmer perspective and clearer eyes, you may see the situation differently. In fight or flight, humans breathe in short, rapid pulsing breaths, like a sprinter. This breathing pattern helps you in the short-term burst required for the run or the fight. Breathing shallowly enough and eventually you're holding your breath all together. A potential positive if you need to be invisible, like during a freeze response. When you breathe, you move a little and a predator's eyes are drawn naturally to movement. The flip side of this is also true. If you are not under threat and you breathe in short, rapid, shallow breaths, you can activate the survival stress response and that gets the adrenaline cocktail pumping into your bloodstream. And remember, you don't get any smarter in this state. And if you are faced with the high-speed problem-solving reality of escalating conflict or violence, I want you wicked smart. This means we have to tell your body, hey, I got this, no need to freak out just yet. And you can train for this with tactical breathing. Slow, deep, diaphragmatic breaths, the paced breathing of a long distance runner or an opera singer. Place your hands on your belly like this. Basically, I use my thumbs and my belly button as the target zone. After a while, when you get this down, you won't have to do this anymore, but starting here is good. This gives you an opportunity that when you do take the deep breath that I want you to, you'll feel the diaphragm move. We're used to breathing really shallowly, so a lot of times we need this physical feedback to tell us that we're actually getting the deep breath. And then as we do this with your hands down here, we're gonna breathe in through the nose and hold it for a four count, and then we're gonna breathe back out again. To start with, I'll breathe back out through the mouth. Later, we're gonna change it up a little bit. Ready? We're gonna do this with me. Good, let's do it again. Ready? Hands down here. And if you're not feeling your belly move, that means you're holding a little bit. So relax a little bit more without collapsing that spine. So one more. Okay, cool. So tactical breathing originates from mindfulness traditions and has a long history of proving to be particularly effective. It works because breathing in slow, deep, controlled breaths creates a signal that says, all is well. It helps mitigate the side effects of adrenalization and keeps your thinking self accessible keeps your vision and your auditory acuity on deck, and your fine motor skills are still more viable. With practice, tactical breathing can positively impact the sympathetic nervous system in just a couple of breaths. Work with this enough, even the first breath in the routine can begin to de-escalate the rising tide of your SSR activation. If this is the first time you've deliberately managed your breathing, Start slow so you don't freak out your sympathetic nervous system and cause the opposite result. A couple of exercises you can do. Firstly, a little stretch for the neck, shoulders and back. So if you're sitting in a chair, you'll need to sit up comfortably. I'm gonna show you how to do this and you're gonna hold these stretches for around 15 seconds. If you take one hand and press it down to the side and take the ear to the shoulder, we'll start to feel a stretch through the neck. You're gonna do that on both sides and hold for about 15 seconds. That really begins to release the tension through the neck. What we then do is take the hands up to about chest level, clasp them together in front, and just simply press forwards. And we feel the shoulder blades spread apart, the elbows are slightly bent. That's a really good way of reducing the, the tension through the upper back. Let's try a, um, a basic breathing exercise. If you place the palms on the rib cage at the side, right to right and left to left, the fingers are spread and just as you take those deep breaths in and out, feel the rib cage expanding. Yeah? Now what I'm going to ask you to do is to apply a little bit of pressure with the hands. As you inhale, you have to work that little bit harder now through the respiratory muscles to expand the rib cage and then relax. So try that a few times. 
That'll help you to relax through the whole upper body, but also it starts to calm the mind. And yoga classes are a great way to learn more breathing techniques. In order to aid concentration, choose an object for your attention. For example, um, think of a word, a word that helps you to relax. So it might be peace or calm, whatever it is. Each time you take a breath in, think of the word, say it to yourself slowly and make it last the length of the out breath. Okay, breathe in. As you exhale, say the word, make it last the length of the breath. Now you may notice your attention begins to wander. Don't try to block out these incoming thoughts. Let them come, but then let them go and go back to focusing on your word. We need more than just stress management. We need life management. We need self-care and effective strategies that support our emotional well-being. Your energy for life is fundamentally a reflection of the state of your heart and your soul. Your emotional health determines your energy levels. So above all, treat yourself with loving kindness. Hey, thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about any of the topics in this episode, the full list of series that these clips came from is in the description below. You can watch all the full series now on Wondrium.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Turn on notifications and you'll get an alert every time we post a new episode of Perspectives.